Hey, it's Michael Che, and I am here in Hollywood for the TCM Classic Film Festival. It's an overcast day in Los Angeles, and you can just see the Hollywood sign through the clouds. I'm staying at the Lowe's Hollywood Hotel. Well, here I am in my hotel room. I was able to check in early right when I got here, so that's terrific. And the view isn't quite as good as it was the last time I was here, but I'm, at night I'm sure it'll be pretty. I see a lot of the lower level roof tops, but I can also see the um, swimming pool and the mall that's out in front. And um, a little bit further over, I can see the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel where I partially stayed last time I was here. So here's what the room looks like. So we've got a big picture window, and we've got a nice little seating area here, and a nice large king-size bed, and a little writing desk area. So it's rather spacious, comfy, interesting. A little book about Los Angeles, and a little coffee service, which I love. Okay, next on my agenda is I'm going to unpack a little bit, and then I'm going to go over to the Hollywood Roosevelt and pick up my Festival Pass, and get all situated over there. Hollywood party, get up, get up, get in it. Hollywood party, oh, nobody sleeps tonight. Bring along your girl, go home with someone else's. Forget about your girl, cause she's gonna do all right. I'm meeting friends for dinner at the Tam O'Shanter. This was a regular hangout of Walt Disney and his animators, and friends Michael and Loretta arranged for us to sit at their regular table. Well, here it is, Thursday morning, the first day of the festival. And I got up, got my coffee, and I'm going to be going down for breakfast. And I think I'll do some sightseeing and be a tourist today. I'm going to go see the Hollywood Bowl and the Hollywood Museum. And then tonight are the first two movies that I'll be seeing during the festival. They visit the Hollywood Bowl even in the daytime. Although it is famous for its music at night, under the stars of cool summer evenings. This museum is free to the public and open most days, but there isn't much to it. It does have a nice little history of the facility though. The 
finest musicians, singers and dancers in the world bring their artistry for everyone's enjoyment. Yes, right over that hill, Mr. Bowers, is the famous Hollywood Bowl. The Hollywood Bowl? Say, can we get in? You mean to say that a person singing on that stage way down there can be heard all the way up here? Then I can prove it. Now you stay huh? right where you are. Well, wait a minute. This building was an agricultural barn that got turned into one of the first movie studios used by Cecil B. DeMille during the silent days. And then it was moved to the Paramount Pictures lot. And now it's been placed here across from the Hollywood Bowl so the public can come see it. And it is a museum. Unfortunately, it was not open today. This building behind me sits at the address on Vine Street of the Vine Street Brown Derby restaurant, which is no longer. But when I was 13 years old, it was there, and I actually went inside and took a look around before they shooed me and my brother out of there. Right next door, there's this interesting building that has the look of the Brown Derby. It is not the Brown Derby, but perhaps created in the style of, as in, in tribute, you know? But I don't know. That building's the Max Factor building and it's been turned into a museum. I'm gonna check it out. This room is dedicated to Lucille Ball, and there's one of her gowns. As I look at you, a thought goes through my mind. What a marvelous time you to make up on a list. I am proud that I have you right by my side But I'd be satisfied to lend you to the public to be seen You ought to be in pictures, you're wonderful to see You ought to be in pictures, oh, what a thing The basement level was dedicated to horror movies
This museum is not expensive and there is a lot of fun stuff to look at here. I was the first one in the door to get a seat at the bar for Musso and Frank. And I seem to find the happiness I see. I'm in heaven, and the cares that hung around me too. First movie. Classic Film Festival. Can you believe it? It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, thank you so much for being here. This film uh, has been restored by Warner Brothers in collaboration with the Film Foundation. Uh, it's just a very important collaboration with, with, uh, with the Film Foundation that can bring uh, these films to you and to future generations. So our deepest thanks to Warner Brothers and to Film Foundation. Oh, opening night, how you feeling? Do you feel as sparkly as I look? Yeah. <laughs> it's Friday morning. It looks like we're getting a break in the clouds a little bit today, which is nice, except what do I care? I'm going to be in a movie theater all day. Looks like it's shaping up to be a great Friday morning. I am going to run off after just having had breakfast. I'm going to hit the line for King Kong. Now the line is a thing I hadn't figured on. I forgot about this. You wait in line to get a ticket that has a number on it. And when they run out of numbers, there's no more seats, right? Well, once they give you your number, you can go off any place and then come back one half hour before the movie starts and get back in line. Now, this is kind of a nice feature, but if you aren't in line earlier than a half hour, you may not get in. So, there's this time between movies where you have to be in line. And the movies don't have that much time between them if you want to really squeeze in a lot of movies. And then there's the question of, when am I going to eat? Now, I already was worrying about this, but I was thinking, oh, as long as I have an hour, hour and a half in between, I can, like, grab something quick and get to the next movie. Maybe and maybe not. And it depends on what the trek is between theaters. Because if you're going up to the Legion, that takes more time to be there, and then you're, you're, you're going to be just hanging out there until the movie starts. So um, I may be dropping some of the films I originally decided to see. We'll see how this goes today. I got my ticket for King Kong and there's about a half hour wait before I have to get back in line. So I'm hanging out at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel lobby.
This is the first time I'm seeing the grand drape. You can see it to the sides there. Because King Kong is in a square format, the drapes are being brought in to mask what would be the IMAX screen underneath. So it was really cool to see that curtain. Officer of the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, and I'm so excited to be with you today. So let's all sit back and relax and enjoy the original King Kong. What's really nice is my hotel is a quick walk through a breezeway right to the back entrance of the theaters. So I opted out of seeing East of Eden so I could afford the time to have a lunch. But now after relaxing my room for a hot sec, I'm going back to get in line to see Warner Night at the Movies. This was a special Warner Brothers program that included coming attractions trailers, a Bugs Bunny cartoon, a short subject about Hollywood stars playing polo, and a newly restored James Cagney film, Strawberry Blonde. After the movie, I spied Ben Makowitz. Ooh! Okay, I broke down and bought some merch. And TCM socks, which are kind of a fun little pattern. They had socks last year that I got in my ditty bag when I had the elevated pass. So I didn't get a ditty bag with little goodies in it, but they sell them. And this is this year's socks. Kind of love them. Had to have them. And I have to get a t-shirt because, you know, but here's the t-shirt design. Not bad. So I decided to forego another movie. I was going to see The Three Musketeers at the Legion Theater. It just was too tight, and then I, there's no way I was going to eat anything good. So I took a recommendation from a person who sat beside me at lunch. I had lunch at the hamburger diner that's in the Roosevelt Hotel, and everybody in there eating what was from the festival. And um, she told me about this place. <laughs> Ordner's is an old-timey neighborhood bar updated for today. I ordered from the happy hour menu and it was pretty good. Now tonight at 9.30 I'm going to see The House of Wax in 3D. The movie was remastered for contemporary 3D and it was quite spectacular. We go to the main building of the American Legion in Hollywood and admire its modernistic style. It's Saturday morning now, and I'm off to the Legion Theater for two movies. A 1932 film I've never seen before, The Wiser Sex, which was filmed at the Kaufman Astoria Studio in New York, just a few blocks from where I used to live. And a 1951 sci-fi, When Worlds Collide. This showing was in sense around, so the seats vibrated when the rocket took off. And there was a nice pre-show talk all about the special effects used in the film. The treasure of the Sierra Madre had the surprise of a Q&A with director John Huston's son, Danny Huston. I decided to skip a 6 o'clock film so I could have a leisurely dinner, and then I got in line to see my last film, 
but a silent version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This included a really nice pre-show talk. Uh, I would like to welcome our very good friend, Mr. Leonard Molson. <laughs> is on a plinth, but like chained to a plinth on his knees uh, while he's being uh, lashed. And that was the shirtless scene, so just everything was so amazing in that. I had the same exact body, body position with, on a plinth with chains on me in the shape of water. Yeah, I knew anyone who saw that movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, that was a scene that took us a few days to shoot, and I was on my knees with my legs bent behind me, and you know, and my knees, I had to end up putting pads in here, special ones, and my ankles were getting kind of, and the toes were getting, I was getting all cranky about my I watched him in the same, same position, and I'm like, wow, of course, but he's doing it in this self, again, this self-made makeup, and, and uh, so he tortured himself there, and tortured himself again on film, and God bless him. Right? And yeah, shaking his head. The innkeeper says it's time. <laughs> Doug Jones, thank you so much for coming to me. Sunday now and I have to hit the road and get back to Sacramento so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to see any of the films today but that's okay I had a great time at the festival and if you go to the festival I highly recommend staying at the Hollywood Lows it's terrific <laughs>